Hey, Viking fans, it's time for the Minnesota Vikings versus Arizona Cardinals day one joint practice recap in three, two, one. <laughs> Gather around, Skull brothers and sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. Make sure you look at the ticker below, subscribe, like, and comment. I appreciate it. That's what makes the channel go. We're going to talk about the recap of yesterday's practice. I'm going to go to Tyler Fornes from Vikings Wire. He had, a, he had an article. I'm going to react to it. Nine takeaways from Vikings first joint practice versus Cardinals. I got some video for you. Um, showing some highlights of practice from Twitter. Thank you guys that are on the ground giving me content. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, let's let's just go right into it, man. I, I was excited about the results of this practice. You can tell Tennessee is a better team than the Cardinals. Um, that's for sure, because we're looking – we either took a step forward or the Cardinals were that bad. That's what we're looking at. Now, uh, Tyler Fornes, nine takeaways from Vikings first joint practice versus Cardinals. The Minnesota Vikings have concluded their first joint practice with the Arizona Cardinals on Wednesday afternoon with the heat index really high. The Vikings moved the practice start from 2.30 p.m. to Central to 11 a.m. Central. The Cardinals came in with a few staff led by a new staff led by Jonathan Gannon and multiple former Vikings, including cornerback Chris Boyd and center Pat Elfline. Coming out of practice, we learned a few things about where the Vikings currently are. Here are the nine biggest takeaways from joint practice, according to Tyler Fornis. Byron Murphy revenge practice. I mean, I'm seeing reports from Twitter, people talking CB1 after today, uh, watching him lock, lock down receivers. Awesome. After spending his first four seasons with the Arizona Cardinals, Byron Murphy Jr. signed with the Vikings and gets a crack at his former team. In early portions of practice, Murphy was going up against Marquise Hollywood Brown. Stayed with him and undercut and in route for an interception. Great rep, one on ones. Here it is, boys and girls. Look at that. Just stayed with him, stayed under him. Pass was to him, man. Let's just watch that again. Look at this. Inside. Stayed with him. Took it. Took it. It's his. That's what I'm talking about. That was what I wanted to see. More video of looking what we got. We need one guy we don't need to worry about. We don't need he's just a man-to-man -man guy that we don't need to worry about. Looks like Murphy might be that dude. Multiple players did not practice um, for the Vikings on Wednesday afternoon. Lewis seen injured his groin earlier this week, and both Najee Thompson and Nikhil Harry suffered an injury on Saturday. I believe soft tissue for Harry. I believe Najee Thompson concussion protocol. Kenny Nwongo has been out for weeks and no word on Tay Gallon. Go look at my other video about Aaron Dykes. We might be looking at Aaron Dykes as a third running back, believe it or not. I I, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. After taking a hard fall in practice last week during practice, Jordan. All right. After taking a hard fall in practice last week during practice, okay. Uh, Jordan Addison has been in concussion protocol. The one – uh, of the conversations wasn't one of worry, but just a small setback. Addison was seen back in the practice field as a full participant, which is a great sign. And all accounts, Addison looked like trouble. It looked like trouble yesterday. That's great. Uh, oh, here we go. Here's the tweet from Andrew Kramer. Uh, Vikings are in practice versus Cardinals. It's warm. Wide receiver Jordan Ass appears out of concussion protocol. Asamoah, awesome Blackman, Atamoyu back in pads. No Lewis seen. Also did not practice. Nwangu, Gowan, Thompson, Harry, Bowplan. All right. TJ Hawkinson still working on working out to the side. Dealing with an inner ear slash contract extension injury that is impacting his equilibrium. It would me if I was due a lot of money and uh, balance. TJ Hawkinson is still not a full participant. He warmed up with the team, but is still just working off to the side. Frustrating to see him not practicing, but it's not a major concern unless he's not practicing before week one. Agreed. Now I have talked about this 
and w- at least my live show last night that he he could be franchise tag and he don't want that for sure because tight ends don't make a whole lot of money the top five average is going to bring down what he could possibly make someone was talking about 12 I'm, i don't know about that but it might be a little more than 12 um, million dollars a year but uh it wouldn't be a bad plan by, for Koisi since our um tight end group is looking so good but yeah tj hawkinson is elite got a Pay him like he's elite. Uh, Andrew Kramer, Brian O'Neill, indeed took 11 on 11 reps as the right tackle versus the Cardinals after sitting out the Titans practice. Another step forward for him. Hawkinson is on the side field with the trainer. He did not leave. I lost sight of him. Brian O'Neill is back in team drills is the big one. Uh, After partially tearing his Achilles on January 1st, every time I hear that, I cringe. Uh, Brian O'Neill has been slowly working his way back. He was working on in 11 11 drills and looking good while doing it. Seeing him in this type of competitive practice is a good sign for him to be ready week one. And here he is, Stonewall on a guy. Let's watch this. Ah, a little buffering, a little buffering. Let's watch it again. Let's watch it again. Buffering, production value. Here we go. Here we go. Gets out there, doesn't let his guy go. You shall not pass. You shall not pass. Speaking of that. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's Brian O'Neill on the outside. Ivan Pace Jr. is continuing to work with the starters. Let's go. Let's go. Brian Osamoa to... Uh, the second is back from what I don't know what he's doing here. Brian Austin was back from his injury and was working on individual individual drills, but hasn't been participating in team drills. In his place was Ivan Pace Jr. That is worth noting, especially ahead of the ahead of Troy Die, who has been improved as tra- this training camp. It is not a surprise considering his preseason, but it's still noteworthy. I think everybody's thinking Troy Die is looking better. Um, he's not had the overall production as far as his tackles, but this guy is not a run stopping linebacker. He's there for a lot of, you know, covering ground coverage. Uh, he's improved in his tackling. Apparently uh, it looks like I, 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 I liked him and he made that pick. This is solid. He's playing really solid. He saved his roster spot this year. I thought he was out. I did. I thought, th- I thought he was gone this year. I probably was calling for it even. And now, not so much. I think he makes it as our fourth linebacker. Osmo appears to be sitting out 11 on 11 sessions, according to Andrew Kramer. Troy Reader and Troy Die with the twos. Pace with the starters. Reader might be sticking around a who knows practice squad. Uh, not, not not great in pass coverage. Just week one, for sure, he was looked lost. Jalen Rager continues to show out. That's great for this guy. That is great for this guy. Gets a lot of heat, a lot of heat, even for me. Uh, wide receiver Jalen Rager continues to have a great preseason. Has shown out in both practices and game scenarios and trying to keep his roster spot. During Wednesday's practice, Rager continued that with a fantastic one-handed catch on a corner out where he created separation. This is a thing of beauty. Let's do it. Let's watch that again. Let's watch that again. Separation, one-handed grab, back in bounds, whole body in bounds. There we go. Joan Williams is back with the first team. He has not impressed me too much. He has not impressed me. He's just a big guy. He had that holding penalty in the uh, cost us uh, a stop in the preseason game. With Mikai Blackman still working through his arm injury, he, he isn't participating in team drills. He did work in individual drills, so it should be too much of a concern. Joan Williams ended up getting his reps on the first team in nickel situations, meaning he's still ahead of Andrew Jr. So what this tells me is he's making the team. And that means we got to, to keep uh, uh, Thompson as a, as a special teamer. We're going to have to keep six corners. That's what, that's what it means to me. Cornerback Juwan Williams is getting a lot of work with the first team defense, playing alongside Byron Murphy and a Caleb Evans, according to Vikings Insider, Vikes Insider. Kirk Cousins. 
attacking deep with success. I saw a really good catch from Justin Jefferson. Couldn't find that video um, before this. I, I just had to get this recorded. The Vikings offense has been inconsistent throughout training camp, but we are seeing them succeed more and more as time goes on. This isn't a surprise at all, but rather normal quarterback Kirk Cousins hit multiple deep shots on Wednesday with one on Brandon Powell and one on Jalen Rager. Great to see him finding these connections. Kirk Cousins throws a bomb deep downfield to Jalen Rager during the situational drive at the end of practice today. All right, let's watch it. A little buffering. Some bu buffering. All right, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. So I, if you, I think it's on one of my uh, clips here. So this is uh, Jalen Rager's catch, if you can see it there. A little closer up. Nice, nice, nice body control. Doesn't have big hands, so that was a hard catch. Um, pretty impressive. That's from Vikings. Here we go. This is the little bigger version of Murphy making that interception. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Here we go. Oh, here's the catch. Here's the catch I was talking about. Deep to Rager. Dude's got speed, can catch. That's all I need to know. And here's Jordan Addison making a nice in route. Addison looked good. There's some highlights of him making people miss. Real shifty. Better than I expected. Not a straight line guy. Come on. Give me this play. This was a good play. Sorry for the production value. It, it all works and then it doesn't, right? Let me see if I can get another. No. All right. All these other videos are working <laughs> except for. Here we go. In, in cut. Look at that. Let's start it over. Nice little hands catch. Working. The, it, I guess that's zone. I guess it's zone. Uh, just under, you know, breaks off the route and boom, hands right there. Nice. 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 You know, they were looking good with uh, Mullins throwing or Cousins throwing. It's pretty awesome takeaway. All right. That's it for this. Pra this that's it for a joint practice number one in the books. I think it was a great success. I didn't hear as many people talking about the defense. Um, but hey, we'll let's, we'll talk about it more on the second joint practice. See if I can get some more video on that, or you know what people are saying about the defense and joint practice. We'll see. Uh, we just need to get healthy, guys. We just need to get healthy. Good news is after the preseason game, we got two weeks. Hopefully, we're at full strength going into this game. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Skull Vikings. Cue the music. Thank <laughs> you.